Well, good morning, everybody. Fantastic to be here. It's my first time at Aguila Sveria, and I've been really inspired and uh, provoked by some great speeches and workshops. Uh, and I hope the next 10 minutes does the same for you guys. So I want you to picture a scene. It's November 2016. It's cold outside. It's one of those days that you walk to work with your coat wrapped up around your ears just to keep the wind out. You arrive at work. It's warm. There's energy in the room. You feel a sense of belonging. There's people in the corner doing a stand-up. There's guys at the whiteboard uh, making some pictures. There's conversations going on. When you look around, there's images, there's screenshots, there's code on the screens. Everybody's working. You know exactly what you're going to do. You're part of a project that has a clear goal by Christmas, and you know exactly what you're going to do to that day. That's perfect. Until you find out that the project that you're working on might be cancelled. Now, what sort of feelings do you think comes up in people uh, when, when they hear that news? Yeah, it's not great. It's feelings of fear, uh, anxiety, uh, yeah, lots of negative things that come into people's mind that do two things. They reduce motivation, and along with that, productivity goes down. And that's exactly where we stood as a team in November last year. So what did we do? My name's Mark Peacock. I'm the head of platform development at NetEnt. We build uh, exciting and engaging games for the casino industry. Uh, and I want to tell you a story about how we reorganized our team of 100 people uh, during that time in November 2016. I want to tell you about the method we used and why we used it, how we prepared and how we executed that, and some things that we learned along the way. How does that sound? Excellent. So back to those feelings then. We knew as a management team, as everybody else does, that we wanted to get rid of those feelings as quickly as possible. So we set ourselves a goal. Here we stood in November 2016, and we wanted by the time that we got to Christmas that year, for everybody to be in new teams, to know what they would be doing when they came back in the new year, and who they would be working with. So we set ourselves that goal. So then the question was, how are we going to do it? Now, at NetEnt, we have a core value. It's uh, being speed smart. One of the things that that means is that we like to make decisions where they matter. Now, where better to make the decision of what team I'm working in and who I'm going to be working with and the work that I'm doing than with the team member themselves? There's also a theory that says that self-selected teams are more productive, they're happier, they're more motivated, and they're more stable. So we decided to do an experiment. We decided to use the process of self-selection to allow people to choose their teams. And that process of self-selection is essentially to give people the responsibility. Hey, you're now responsible for choosing the team that you're going to be in. Now, as soon as you do that, you put yourself in the, the shoes of the team member. Hey, what does that team member need? Now, for me, it's all around uh, having the information available to me so I can make an informed decision. So that's exactly what we did. We put a little bit of structure around it. And we decided to do two things. Uh, one was build a team model, and one was to put a little bit of uh, structure around the process. So we started with a team model. And coming up with the, with the team model was, uh, is an exciting subject in itself. Uh, but suffice to say, we wanted to create it as quickly as possible, to create visibility and transparency. So four teams got together, or four groups of people, product, development, uh, management, and agile coaches. And we came up with our best guess, essentially, of what teams we thought we would need uh, to deliver uh, in platform at NetEnt. Um, we also came, so that was the team model done. And it was basically three streams of work. It was to support our existing value streams, potential new value streams, and to build a framework to support those teams. So great, we have a team model. Then we move on to the, the process part, and we wanted to put a little bit of structure around that. Now we decided to have a self-selection exercise. So we decided on a date, 
we decided that we would have everybody in the room all gathered together at a single point of time so that it would be a perfectly visible process. So now great, we have, uh, and we wanted that to be about three hours, we thought, that exercise. We thought that would give enough time for people to be able to select the teams they wanted. We thought that it would probably take three iterations, so we would ask people, please go and uh, select your teams, and then once we'd seen the teams that we had, we needed to balance them out. And we also gave three principles, or sorry, three priorities, uh, in choosing your team, you should put netent, i.e. the company first, and then the needs of the team, and then the needs of you as an individual. So that was the, the process set. So great, we've got all of that. Now me as a manager, I know it's great to give this responsibility away. I know what it feels like for myself when I get it, but it's still really hard. <laughs> to give that amount of control away uh, to the people that we have, that was tough. So we, in the management team, gave ourselves one indulgence. We uh, went away in a room and we basically simulated what we thought the process would turn out like. So we drew up the team model, we wrote everyone's name down on a post-it note, and we basically put people where we thought they would choose. We took a step back, we had a look, and we asked ourselves, are these the teams that could deliver for us in platform? And the answer was yes. I took a photo and it stayed on my phone to this day. It's gone nowhere else. The point wasn't to come up with the answer. The point was to give us as managers just a little bit more confidence that this experiment might actually work. And that was important for the last week. So when we we're at the end of November, now we're coming up to Christmas. It's a week away from Christmas. It's a week away from the exercise. And in that week, we released the model, we released the, practical, the practicalities of how we were going to do the exercise, uh, and then we communicated. So given that we were now a little bit more confident, we could talk to people, we could chat to people, we could alleviate their fears, we could reassure them, we could give them advice. We put stuff out on a wiki, all the information we had, we refined the model as we went along and talked to people, and also built a big FAQ. We even had a big Ask Me Anything session so that everybody could be joined all at once and ask the questions of the management team. Hey, how's this going to work? And something magic happened in that week. For me, that cloud of anxiety that laid across platform, it started to lift. And even some people's reaction went from one from anxiety to actually one of a little bit of excitement. Hey, this was a cool exercise we were going to do. So great, we've done as much preparation as we think we can. Now we're at the actual day. We hire the biggest room that we can find at NetEnt at the time. There's windows along the side so people can actually watch what's going on. And we physically put up big sheets of paper all around the room. Uh, and they basically have the team name, the team mission, and the number of people we think are going to be on the team. It's just to give some context and a little bit of structure. It was all negotiable. And then we asked people to go around with their post-it notes and physically put what team they were going to be in. Now, we thought this was going to take about three hours. In reality, it only took about 20 minutes. So there was, we did have a second iteration, and there were a couple of people who moved around based on the needs of the teams that they kind of put their hand up and said, we need these skills. But effectively, it was done within that first 20 minutes. And we asked ourselves, why? Why did it only take 20 minutes? And we think the reason is, was that, that week before. So given all of that information, people had the chance to chat to their colleagues, to talk about it with their managers, to get some recommendations, maybe to reflect on themselves, or maybe it was just obvious to them which team they were going to be in. But basically, by the time they got into that exercise, their decision was more or less made. So rather than it being a decision point, it turned out to be making that decision visible to everybody else in that 100-person team on that day. And we did it. So just before Christmas, we'd managed to reorganize a team of 100 people into the teams, and everybody knew what teams they were going to be on. The result, well, it's, it's interesting to, to look back now, and I don't think after six months we can truly say whether it, was a, whether it worked or not perfectly. I can say that only one person has resigned from platform in that time, in that six-month period. 
But what I think is worth applauding uh, is the behavioral change. It was putting the responsibility into the people who worked in platform and saying, hey, you guys decide. You have the information you want. You have that list of priorities. So for me, the learnings or the validations maybe are trust your team. Make things as visible as you can to bring down anxiety and to bring up uh, some positive feelings uh, and to experiment, as everybody knows. So I'll leave you, I'll leave you with one thing. Uh, next time, or when you're going to reorganize your teams, trust your teams to make the right decision. Thank you very much.